We live in a time where doctors make a lot of money, not just for peddling drugs through big pharma or pushing unnecessary medical procedures. They seem to enjoy mutilating people in the name of medicine for your health. It's good for you. I remember years ago uh, when I went to the hospital with a horrible stomach ache and pain, and it was in the appendix area. You know, I was familiar with that removal procedure because my friend at the time had it done. Within an hour of being in the emergency room, I had a slew of doctors trying to convince me that they had to cut me open and remove my appendix. I ended up going home because I had to work that night and I was completely fine the next day. Instead of understanding the root cause of the organ damage, what that organ is supposed to do, what can compromise it, you know, finding a natural solution, doctors just decide to remove them, causing lifelong issues in every single case. The overarching solution to each of these problems is following a diet free of pollutants, ample in vitamins and minerals, usually a lack of animal protein, and reducing the environmental radiation, which is also a huge factor. In addition, there might be specific nuances for certain organs, inclinations of certain deficiencies, or environmental factors that make that specific organ dysfunction. Today we're going to do a brief overview of seven organs, why they're usually removed, what the downsides are, and how to naturally prevent that issue. All of this is insane to me. How someone, simply by being in a position of authority, can convince you you don't need a certain organ you were born with. Tonsils especially, you know, one of the more common removals People don't even think you need them, but the function is so obvious, simple, and to anyone with common sense, crucial. The first line of defense for germs and bacteria entering our bodies, they get trapped in the tonsils, then the immune system, the white blood cells, can prevent a further infection, which would require much more resources to get rid of. And I did a video back in February on all of those organs in our immune system if you want a more in-depth understanding. But doctors tend to remove the tonsils when they're constantly infected, inflamed, the child's always getting sick. So, so they remove a part of the child's immune system because he's constantly getting sick. Go figure. On top of that, it's an incredibly traumatizing surgery. Over 50% of people getting it reporting severe pain, incredibly uncomfortable, and you actually have to stay in the hospital overnight for a full removal, and in some cases, they only remove part of the tonsils. Those people are a little better off. As you can imagine, if you remove part of your immune system, it becomes weakened, and you'll hear plenty of stories about people getting their tonsils removed, and then they still have persistent infections, if anything, getting worse and worse and worse. Uh, all you can really do is just do those things I said. Improve your diet, reduce the environmental radiation, exercise, make sure everything's in balance, get plenty of sun. I also hear a lot about thyroid removal, uh, mainly because once I started selling the freeze-dried thyroid on organ supplements, I had so many people reaching out to me because that's what doctors prescribe to patients after they remove the thyroid. It has the bioactive components, the thyroid hormone that is crucial for regulating metabolism, heart rate, weight loss, weight gain. And we did a video on Hashimoto's, Graves' disease, how to improve thyroid function, where I even mentioned the glandulars. Uh, doctors will remove it in a lot of those circumstances, especially with goiters, nodules, any sort of under or overactive thyroid, which is kind of ironic as 50% of patients that get the thyroid removed develop further thyroid issues, a lack of hormone. No surprise, you remove the organ. So they go from having an overactive thyroid to underactive and not enough of the hormone. And it's hard to put the blame on anything here besides tap water. You know, the amount of fluoride, chlorine, bromide in our water, even our food, inhibits iodine absorption and blocks receptors in the thyroid. The thyroid is so iodine dependent that I'm curious how anyone in the United States even has one, you know, based on the pollution, the lack of iodine consumption. You basically want to switch to a high quality mineral water, remove all of those other halogens, uh, which are the elements in that family, 
the bromide, the chlorine, the iodine, the fluoride, and they all have common receptors. But I've done videos on iodine. I've explained this in the thyroid video. Then you want to supplement iodine. So by removing those negatives and supplementing iodine, if done correctly, should quickly resolve the thyroid problems and those glandulars are kind of just a little boost. If not that, you also want to do what we mentioned earlier, the higher quality diet, lowering of the environmental radiation, and the downside is what we said. You know, the doctor prescribes you permanent medication to replace the missing hormones. Gallbladder removal, also very popular, and I also did an in-depth video on that. Here, I'll simply explain quickly what I went over in that video. The gallbladder as a function, producing and storing bile for the digestion and absorption of fats. And certain factors in our modern lifestyle cause gallstones to form, which is basically concentrated cholesterol you know, due to a lack of bile being produced. And these gallstones can get stuck, completely engorge the gallbladder to where it's almost like a stone, like completely hardened. And common symptoms of this are stomach pain, nausea, digestive issues, like right shoulder pain. The main cause of this, excess estrogen, lack of dietary protein, fatty liver from insulin resistance, high cortisol from lifestyle stress, and most importantly, not consuming enough saturated fats, which triggers the release and production of bile. So it's underuse of the organ and so many consistent lifestyle factors that pretty much everyone is suffering from that makes this such a common removal procedure. And removing the organ tends to cause lifelong digestive issues in at least half of patients, either diarrhea or constipation, depending on a surplus or lack of bile. And I believe the bile is caustic enough to dissolve gallstones on a proper diet, but I'm not sure what can be done under extreme circumstances. I would like to hear from anyone in the comments who has had gallstones or gallbladder issues and remedied them naturally. Um, if you had your gallbladder removed, definitely check out that video. Uh, you basically have to supplement ox bile and certain digestive enzymes to make sure that you're absorbing the fat properly. Now with the three we've spoken about so far, people tend to have more of a choice, although in reality you're just getting badgered and convinced, basically threatened by doctors to get the procedure done. You know, all of these. With circumcision, however, it seems to be less of a choice. And the rates of circumcision in the United States are multiple times higher in other countries. I think it's like 60 to 70% here, whereas places like New Zealand are below 5%. And the procedure is performed on infants in their first three days of life. If that's not crazy enough for you, you know, the fact that you're, you're cutting a piece of a baby off right after they're born, you know, a way to give them so much stress, set them up for failure. You know, the baby has to heal that tissue. That's a priority as opposed to developing the brain and other parts. A simple comparison for this. How do you feel about female genital mutilation? How about removing breasts so you don't risk breast cancer? What about something silly like cutting your fingertips off so you don't have to trim your nails? <laughs> Ridiculous is an understatement. And the benefits of circumcision are apparently just that it's easier to clean. Maybe there's a slightly lower risk of some STDs. The overarching lifelong consequence is compromised sexual function. It doesn't feel as good. You don't have the mechanical lubrication anymore. Worst case scenario, which is actually fairly common, I think 1% of all procedures result in some sort of mutilation or issue where they have to do another procedure. And then 1% of neonatal deaths are actually due to complications from circumcision. Yeah, I really don't see why this has to be done on a baby when they're you know three days old. You know, let the person grow up, become an adult if they want to remove half the organs in their body because the doctor told them. <laughs> let them. I mean, there's a whole bunch of in-depth stuff on this and all of these that you can talk about, but the actual foreskin tissue is used in other pharmaceuticals, medicals to like grow cells and tissues, and they even put it in certain beauty products. Uh, so there's definitely 
uh, a doctor's incentive, you know, who knows how much money someone is making off of it. It's, it's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. Moving on to the appendix, and it's interesting that doctors recently discovered the function of the appendix is to protect the good bacteria and the yeast in an infection. And it makes you wonder how much other health information they're keeping from the general public just so they don't have any competition. You know, when people are sick and diseased, unhealthy, you know, they don't do as well in life. It's as simple as that. So if you ate something you shouldn't have, usually a combination of poor food choices, allergens, overeating, appendicitis can develop, you know, in the circumstance that, you know, your body can't remove what it consumed. Uh, sometimes it can be unusual, like you eat a seed, like chocolate, oats, figs, grape seeds, melon seeds are common culprits. They're incredibly high in anti-nutrients and plant toxins. And if they get stuck in that appendix area because they're really tiny, um, but I'm not sure how true that is, that's just listed online, um, that might not be the case at all. To my understanding, it's a combination of constipation and allergens, those crappy food choices. Dairy can be a major culprit here as it's very high in calcium, which can cause constipation, low gut motility on its own. And most people do have consistent dietary habits. So when they start getting the pain and it doesn't go away for days or weeks, you know, appendix removal seems like the only solution. And I'm sure a bunch of magnesium, correct probiotics, you know, organic fibrous foods would prevent this quickly. It might even just be dehydration, you know, something very simple that can be prevented. The removal of the colon or rectum is another unfortunately popular medical procedure. Sometimes they remove just the colon and attach, you know, the rest of your large intestine to the rectum. Sometimes they remove both, usually due to Crohn's disease, colitis, I think even cancer. And all of those are severe, severe inflammation of the lower digestive tract. To me, this is so crazy. I mean, all of these are crazy, but I don't understand how they even do this. You know, the function of this organ isn't understood by the average person. The importance of nutrient absorption, synthesis, bacteria living in specific stages that are crucial to proper digestion and excretion of waste. You will absolutely have lifelong digestive and health issues. I've never heard of someone getting better after that's removed. Another video I made last year was how to heal your gut microbiome. And if you're able to balance fat soluble vitamins, usually a severe deficiency of vitamin D3 and K2, supplement digestive enzymes and incorporate the right probiotics, it shouldn't take more than a few weeks to start feeling a lot better. However, doctors now lack the information and understanding about what's causing this. You know, I'm also inclined to believe that people that have these issues are more sensitive to radio frequency radiation, which certainly penetrates the gut dysbiosis, commonly being caused by Wi-Fi alone. And this is basically just severe, severe, severe gut microbiome imbalance to the point where they just remove the part where the bacteria is proliferating. Hysterectomy, another very large organ, the uterus, entire female reproductive system, you know, as we said, all of these are crazy, but removing your colon, your rectum, the entire reproductive system, I mean, I mean, these doctors really are evil people when they're convincing people to do that. Uh, the common cause here is very heavy and painful menstruation, periods, uh, possibly some other issues as well. And I touched on the female hormones a little bit on Monday, as well as past videos, but this usually requires an entire lifestyle revamp. You know, I was actually helping my sister adhere to a balanced diet, removing excess estrogen from plastics, from conventional foods, trying to get her out in the sun, optimizing liver function, basically correcting her hormones. But, you know, my parents continue to feed her, you know, feedlot eggs, very estrogenic, basically like little bombs of estrogen, put her back on birth control, won't let her go tanning or go out in the sun, you know, you know, who knows if she'll ever be healthy in their care. And it's very difficult to do all of these things 
especially because it's not a quick fix in many cases and you're not going to have a doctor hounding down your throat you know to go tanning and eat some steak they're just going to look at you with a scalpel say hey you know we need to do this otherwise oh it's going to get worse you're going to die just fear monger you into them paying for their mercedes lease you know and you're not going to repair years and years of damage in a matter of months let alone weeks so when people even start some sort of menial lifestyle change you know they don't get the instant results they expect you know which is what doctors try to give people so people feel a difference i mean of course there are other organs that can dysfunction i mean our modern lifestyle has basically been able to poison every part of our body from heart disease which we have a video on dialysis lack of kidney function uh, we spoke about that in our you know does protein damage the kidneys video uh, bariatric surgery which is the shrinking of the stomach which never really ends well uh, for people that are overweight obese and liver failure and i would say you know most people have some degree of compromised liver function but you know what we said initially in this video you have to completely improve all of the lifestyle factors and depending on the severity of the issue will dictate how long it takes to fix and in a lot of cases you're simply missing an element you know you're overlooking a mineral deficiency a vitamin deficiency you could be overdoing something you could be underdoing something you know it's very complex and difficult to figure out but until you get started on that improved lifestyle you won't really know uh, so thank you guys for joining me today i know this was a little bit all over the place but you know, i wanted to cover every single organ as quickly and simply as possible and we do have videos on most of these going further in depth uh, so if you guys could please drop a like on the video leave a comment down below subscribe so that youtube can unsubscribe you next week and check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos you can check out frank for all of my businesses as well as the glandulars on organ supplements.com thanks again guys i'll see you tomorrow Thank you.